it's still dirt cheap and um I did a couple of, of, of keynotes recently, I would say, with um, more of a, a generalist audience. And, and uh, when I come to the conclusion that gold um, trading at uh, nominal all-time highs is still dirt cheap, you know, people just shook their heads and, and cannot believe what this Stöffele guy is saying. But, you know, on an, on an inflation-adjusted basis, um, gold is still uh, way below the all-time highs. So could we go to 4,800 bucks? which is our long-term target that we um, um, explained in our In Gold We Trust report 2020 for the very first time. Um, yes, definitely, definitely. But I think what's, what's really important to say is that, that we're in a bull market. Hello and welcome back to Soar Financially, where we discuss the macro to understand the micro. My name is Kai Hoffman. I'm the at JR Mining Guy on Twitter, CEO of the Soar Financial Group, and of course, your host for this channel. And I'm really excited to be the host for this conversation coming up here with Ronny Stüffele. He's a partner over at Incrementum Research, and you might know him already. You should know him. If you don't know, where have you been living and what have you been watching lately? Because he's the author, a co author together with his team over at Incrementum of the In Gold We Trust Report. It's about a 400 page behemoth uh, that comes out once a year, usually mid May, and it just depends and details everything in the gold space and I'm really excited to be catching up with him today because uh, it, it's been about a quarter about three months since the report came out and I'm curious like what would he update right now like what, what's the momentum where's the you know the interest in gold coming from right now is gold expensive Lot, lots to talk about and uh, as, as a bonus at the end we'll also discuss a few mining stocks or not not names but I want to discuss sentiment um, where maybe the uh, what do you call it? the diversion not diversion but the discrepancy between maybe gold and the mining indices come f comes from and uh, how interesting the sector is right now. We've just seen a massive $2.16 billion deal announced this morning of recording. Uh, it is Monday, by the way, August 12th. So uh, big, big news here. Uh, quite quite interesting to see that deal happen. Now, without much further ado, please like and subscribe to, cha to the channel. Leave a comment, leave a like. What do you think of the conversation? And now, without much further ado, Ronnie, it is such a pleasure to have you back on the channel. It's good to see you, my friend. Okay, good to see you. Absolutely. No, I'm really looking forward to this conversation, Ronnie. It's been long overdue. It's been a while since you've been on, and uh, we usually manage to catch up once or twice a year, and uh, sometimes you attend our conferences as well. But uh, let's do this virtually. You're in Austria, I'm in Germany. We should be doing this in German, but uh, about 70% of our audience at least is English speaking, so we can't do it in German. It just does not work. But uh, could do it in, in Austrian German. Or in yeah, see, that's where I'd be lost. Yeah. That's where I'd be lost. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, I might not understand you. So uh, let, let's do English, find some common ground here. But uh, let, let, let's dive right in. Of course, topic of discussion is going to be gold. But uh, let, let, let's discuss maybe as a as a can opener for the conversation, Ronnie. Is gold expensive right now? No, I think it's 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 still dirt cheap. And um, I did a couple of, of, of keynotes recently, I would say, with um, more of a, a generalist audience. And, and uh, when I come to the conclusion that gold um, trading at uh, nominal all-time highs is still dirt cheap, you know, people just shook their heads and, and cannot believe what this Stöffele guy is saying. But, you know, on an, on an inflation-adjusted basis, um, gold is still uh, way below the all-time highs. Um, um, if you calculate um, gold versus most of other asset classes, it is still pretty cheap if you calculate it um, via some, um, in comparison to some monetary aggregates, I would say that go gold is really cheap. And the, the, the fact that, you know, people um, still are super um, pessimistic and cautious, even though we are, we're, we're trading with um, so many signs of strength, you know, every pullback is being bought. Um, this is a sign that, you know, we're probably only like in this in this bull market, probably like half time or the, the, the fourth or fifth inning, something like that. But we are not close to the top. Now, interesting, because I brought up the chart here, Ronnie, and uh, you might have just seen it like gold versus CPI. I think you know, we, we need to talk about that just a little bit and what it means and why you think gold is still cheap if you were to compare it to some historical numbers here in the past. Yeah, so I mean, this is like the the, the official inflation numbers. Yeah, we we, we all know that um, uh, those inflation numbers have been um, re reconsidered um, uh, over the last uh, forty years a couple of times. Um, I think like twenty two 
updates uh, when it comes to the the, the calculation of uh, official CPI figures. Um, and uh, for some reason, you know, um, uh, uh, the inflation uh, numbers always uh, uh, fell through that uh, through those uh, kind of updates of the statistical measures. Um, so, but even if we calculated with official CPI numbers, uh, you can see that we are still trading roughly 200 bucks um, below the nominal all-time highs. So, from my point of view, Kai, um, you know, the gold is is is, is trading. It is, it is kind of a early bull market action that we're seeing. Um, we should not forget that it took us basically four years to break out um, uh, of this consolidation phase. Um, and it seems, and this is really um, one of the key takeaways of this year's In Gold We Trust report, um, that the majority of Western financial investors hasn't joined the party yet. Um, I think you can you can basically see that if you have a closer look at um, for example, the the um, um, ETF uh, flows, we're still on a net basis, we're still seeing outflows from the gold ETFs in 2024, even though um, uh, we we are seeing such a, um, you know, bullish, uh, bullish price setup. Um, while on the other hand, um, uh, Eastern investors, especially obviously China and India, um, but also countries like like Vietnam have been uh, pretty strong recently, Thailand, Japan, obviously. Um, it seems that the marginal gold buyer isn't the Western financial investor, but rather the physical gold buyer um, in emerging markets. And I think that we here in the Western world, and this is really something that I'm pounding the table on when I'm speaking at, uh, at big um, uh, conferences, I think we should 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 all travel a little bit, little bit more to emerging markets, talk to people um, about their gold culture, about their gold affinity. Um, so I was really I, I did a big keynote in 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 Dubai last year in in November. Uh, my partner Mark will go there again, and you know if you talk to gold traders from from China, from India, from from the Arabic world, um, from Turkey, obviously, um, you can tell that. They really know their gold. Um, they've got a. They are working on a different time frame. I would say uh, uh, much more um, um, understanding that the really the big picture topics like de-dollarization is just just normal um, uh, to, to 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 talk about for them. Um, and you know the numbers are are clearly confirming this kind of anecdotal evidence because you know just Dubai is nowadays responsible for twenty five percent of all gold trade now. So so I think that that's really one of the most important uh, uh, takeaways that the Western financial uh, investor isn't the marginal gold buyer anymore. I think we need to explore that a little bit, Lonnie. Why why that is? Like why is the Western investor so naive? And the Western investor, I also look look at the American investor in particular. Is like, do they think that everything is going to be honky dory? The U.S. dollar is safe. Everything's going to be fine. We don't have to worry about maybe a debt collapse. That's one of the buzzwords that's been floating around out there. But like, why why are we so naive? Why that that that's a big question, Kai. Um, <laughs> might also be uh, anecdotal evidence, but um, whenever you you attend some. Um, um, traditional, let's say traditional uh, uh, um, uh, events. Um, there were, it, it seemed to me that there's like only one asset out there anymore, and this asset is Nvidia. So um, uh, everybody was just talking about this stock, um, and it seems that you know um, uh, a narrowing, um, narrowing stock market that that is getting uh, more and more narrow uh, every day. Um, that's definitely not a sign of of of, of strength, and and I've, I think we've we've seen the top in the in the tech space now with this brutal unwinding of the of the carry trade, yeah, because it it, it all seemed so easy, you know, weaker yen, stronger um, um, uh, Nvidia, stronger uh, uh, Max Seven, but it seems to me at least, yeah, um, although within one week, you know, we went from from extreme pessimism to um, uh, uh, you know uh, all this pessimism being priced out last week and at the end of the week everybody was was super excited uh, uh, again but it seems to me that this uh, huge source of of capital 
being you know the carry traders uh, I, I i think this um this this trade is over so so from my point of view the market has last week it, it has kind of started realizing that um you know first of all um we have to start pricing in more of a more of a hard landing scenario while everybody before that was soft landing and goldilocks and whatever uh, and 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 we should also um probably um reconsider um the fact that you know raising interest rates that brutally um within a very short time frame and then leaving interest rates on on, on such elevated levels um given the prior history yeah given the, the long history i would say you know interest rates at five percent are, are, are quite quite normal actually um but we can now really see that um uh it has caused some some casualties and and i can tell you for example uh over where 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 i live and wherever wherever i travel to and you know talking to to business owners talking to real estate people um everybody's pretty concerned and i think that financial markets are starting to realize that now as well now you, you you touched on a couple of interesting points. You mentioned de-dollarization, the yen carry trade. So some my my overall question here is like, what is one of the or what are some of the economic trends you're following that that could influence the gold price or that are influencing the gold price right now in your opinion? Like, if you were to rank them, maybe even like, which one do you think is the most important? Uh not a great question, Kai. I, I think that you know from a from a from a big picture point of view, I think. You know, the Western world was basically pretty busy for 30 years um, taking down taking down walls. And, and, and now we are more, you know, inward looking. We're building walls. We're embracing protectionist policies. We're embrace, embracing tariffs. We're embracing um, deglobalization. So I think that's, that's definitely a, a trend. This, this is kind of economic iron curtain that um that is starting to build this is definitely a trend that is uh that is a pretty big concern on the other hand what what i'm seeing is um just having a look at markets um have a look at the gold silver ratio for example have a look at the the ratio between um gold and commodities for example have a look at the yield curve uh which which has now uninverted and on, on on most time frames um this is just screaming recession and 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 i don't think that um the majority of investors at the moment is prepared for 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 any recession so so i would say those two things the the geopolitical long term development that is also being um played in the gold world obviously yeah, because um uh, central banks have become one of the uh, most important drivers of, of 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 gold demand and it's it's primarily um um central banks from 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 emerging markets um and then on the other hand the recessionary clouds that are um darkening i think those are the two imp most important trends that i'm seeing at the moment Re recession and fed i think we need to talk about those topics like a like on the recession topic, what what will that look like in your opinion? How how is that going to play out? Because a lot of people have been forecasting it. It hasn't come yet. I think people have been talking about, it, especially also on this channel, for like two years, <laughs> and uh, we we keep pushing out our forecast. Oh, it's going to come in Q four now, maybe in Q one next year. But I heard the same thing being said, you know, exactly la last year. But uh, look, what is the recession going to look like for you, Oni? And uh, how does the Fed play into this? Well, I would say, you know. <sighs> I, I I have to admit we've we've been too early uh, uh, with the recession call. Um, um, yeah, we 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 got it wrong. Uh, we've been underestimating the amount of fiscal stimulus in the United States. You know, running a what was it eight point uh, one point seven trillion uh, budget deficit at full employment. I mean, that's of course um, this is this is causing um, some 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 growth, but. Um, at a pretty high price. So I think, you know, if, if if you think we will have a soft landing, then just continue buying buying equities, continue buying stocks. But if you're really like in a recession camp like I am, then I think that the Federal Reserve will basically um, uh, chasing interest rates lower. And and uh, I, I think to me, it seems that um, that the soft landing is, 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 is fully priced in. Um, so you probably don't make a lot if that um, um, if that really uh, materializes. On the other hand, I think a recession is 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 
dismissed as being um, uh, improbable. So, so, the, so the, the trade is basically a, some sort of a mirror image of the situation of a year and a half ago when, when everyone thought that the recession was for sure going to happen. And now we're seeing, you know, Kai, that's, that, that's also important. I think, you know, what is the, 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 the recession playbook? Yeah, I mean, how does it usually play out? First of all, central banks, they raise rates pretty aggressively. And then the market signals basically, okay, conditions are getting tighter. So the yield curve inverts. Then we're usually seeing that, that the yield curve stays inverted for, for a couple of months, a couple of quarters. And we have seen uh, one of the longest yield curve inversions uh, in history. Then the economy slows. This is actually what's what, what's happening now, what has started happening uh, in, in, in spring. Then we're seeing that a late cycle yield curve steepening happens. This is exactly what happens now. And the last stage is that the recession occurs. So, so from my point of view, you know, we've been early, we've been too early, but now it really seems that um, that a recession um, is is clearly happening just have a look at the ism have a look at the yield curve as i said before have a look at uh june um, um, um pmi um i think all those signs and also that the so-called uh sam rule um where i made a a, a, a thread about uh on, on twitter this is also confirming the recession now what is the federal reserve gonna do of course they will lower interest rates but i think they will really be chasing um, um, uh, the economy. And I think they will be, as as usually, way behind the curve. <laughs> and a friend of mine who's a, a, a brilliant uh, trader, he's sitting at the bond desk of, um, of, of a pretty large institution. He said something that, that really made me, made, made me think. He said, nobody in the market is seeing that interest rates could go down to 0% again in the case of a severe re recession. I, I think that the, 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 the consensus view is, okay, we hit the recession, we go to 2.5 or 3%, but imagine what's going to happen to to asset allocation if we really should go down to 0% again. Um, so that's something that I'm, um, I'm, I'm wrapping my hand around, head around, and, and I think this is a question that is really worth, uh, worth asking. You took my next question out of my mouth there by going, is the Fed behind the curve? And uh, curious, like I think David Rosenberg said it on Bloomberg last week, I think the Fed funds rate should be at 4%. We're at five and a quarter right now. Uh, I've seen some studies, JP Morgan put out a forecast, they expect a 50 basis point cut now in September, another one, 50, another 50 basis point cut in November, and then 25 per, uh, basis points in December. W would you agree that we're way too high for what the economy is doing right now, that the Fed funds rate is way too high, and that we should be at 4%? Would you agree with that statement that we are way behind or that the Fed is way behind the, the curve here? Obviously, yeah. I think um, you know if if you study the the history of of of, of uh, you know rate cycles, they they've always been behind the curve. Sometimes <laughs> way behind the curve. Um, what's interesting now, I think, is uh, we we described that in in this year's in gold we trust report um, how how asymmetrical um, um, central bank policy has become because now in in, in the eurozone we're, we're still above um, two percent inflation targets and and uh, um, you know central banks were desperate to to lower interest rates while uh, on in, in the other direction um, um, uh, central bankers kept um, talking inflation numbers down and you know it is only a transitory and and uh, uh, only a, a hump like um, like Christine Lagarde said so so they really, they want to lower as soon as possible and they want to raise as late as possible. Yeah? Um, but, but I think, Kai, what's, what's, what's really important, and this is kind of the, we always said that, that, that Japan is the end game. Um, and, and I think, you know, what's, what, what's really going on in, 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 in Japan, that's, that's, that's kind of the, you know, our future in like, uh, I don't know, five years. So we have seen, what a 25 uh, basis point rise in rates um it has shown not only japanese policymakers japanese politicians japanese central bankers but the whole world financial system it has shown us how fragile the financial system is to higher interest rates in japan uh, and we we all know the debt the debt numbers from 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 japan and um 
you know, if, if we have a look at, at, at the United States, for example, um, I mean, if interest rates should stay at, at current levels, let's say at 5%, um, in the first quarter of 2025, um, starting with the first quarter next year, um, the US will have to pay 1.7 trillion just in interest payments. If we should go down, um, um, I think um, uh, 150 basis points, it's still going to be 1.2 trillion. So given the fact that where's US GDP, 24, 25 trillion, those numbers are just staggering. Um, and, you know, with um, with debt being up uh, 12 trillion since the, the, the onset of COVID, of course, this fragility in the Western world in, in the United States gets bigger and bigger. And we're also seeing in France, for example, of course, everybody was super excited about the, the Olympic Games, which was, you know, great as a, as a, as a sports fan. I, I, I loved watching it. Um, but if you have a look at, at, at the, the spread between um, uh, uh, French government debt and, and German bonds, for example, yeah, it's exploding. So, um, yeah, uh, Japan is, is, is really where we're all going to. And, 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 and therefore, I think those are kind of concerns that will, will definitely reappear when everybody is back from the beaches. I'm glad you say that because I've been mentioning that in numerous times. I'm, I'm sure long-time listeners of the, of the podcast and the shows that sort of know that I keep com com comparing the U.S. with Japan. Like, because my biggest fear is that we keep prog uh, like procrastinating. Like, we keep kicking down the can down the road. Like, everybody expects a crash, big recession. But what happens if we go the way of Japan? We just increase that. It goes to 250% where Japan is right now. Like, what, what does the world look like if that actually happens? What will the world financial system look like if that happens? And what's the role of the U.S. dollar and then the role of gold in that system? Well, just have a look at, you know, the price of gold in Japanese yen terms. That's like the, the, the perfect chart. Um, um, I think the last three years, gold in Japanese yen terms was, was up, I think, always... Um, at least 20%. Um, uh, year to date, uh, gold in Japanese yen terms is up 25%. So um, it, it, it seems that, you know, I think the Japanese, uh, they're, they're doing their 14th or 15th round of quantitative easing now. Um, they're now doing uh, QQE, obviously. Um, they've been the first ones to, to, to actually um, cautiously start raising rates and then at the same time doing quantitative easing, which I thought was was pretty interesting, you know. Um, so so I think, you know, this is this is the direction that we're going to. On the other hand, if you run the world's uh, reserve currency like the U.S. does, um, it's a completely different ball game. So um, where will it all lead? Kai, I don't have... Uh, I, I, I cannot tell. I've, 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 I've got some scenarios uh, uh, playing out. I think, you know, if you study monetary history, at some point there will be, um, let's say, um, uh, a reorganization of our monetary system. But will it be in one year or in 10 years? I don't know. I, but I think, you know, and this is, uh, this is one of the, the lessons that I've learned through my career in the investment space. It always takes a little bit longer. And then it happens very, very quickly. So um, I just don't see any scenario in, you know, in, in all those things that, that, that we are kind of um, having in mind wh where gold will not play a major role in the next monetary system. I just pulled up. Let me pull up the chart here real quick of the uh, gold price in yen, I think. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Can everybody read that? I, ho I hope everybody can read that. But uh, back in 2010, uh, golden yen was 97,000 yen roughly, and we're trading it around what is it, 350,000 yen right now. So it, it shows perfectly the the price performance in yen and how that's exploded. I think the yen U.S. dollar ratio right now is 147, I believe, roughly right around there, 150. Um, it, it's an interesting chart. So did did gold fulfill its role? Yes, I think so. I think so. I, I think that you know um, we here in the in the gold world we um, our our view is sometimes a, a little bit skewed. Um, I think that we we should you know we should manage our expectations. Gold's job is to protect your purchasing power and uh, nothing more. Gold um, won't probably make you rich um, uh, overnight. Um, but it won't make you poor. But I think, you know, as you know, we, we've got some some fun charts. Um, 
where we show um, the long-term purchasing power of gold. For example, at the Munich Oktoberfest, we did the same as I'm a, uh, 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 I love skiing. Uh, we did the same with, uh, with ski tickets um, um, in the Austrian Alps. We did the same with iPhones. We did the same quite recently, um, gold, um, uh, gold's pur purchasing power measured in, in gasoline. Um, and you can, you can just say that, that gold has done its job pretty, pretty well of protecting purchasing power measured in not only in 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 in, in goods that become um, um 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 better like like the iphone for example and and more expensive but also in standardized goods um like like gasoline and 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 and, and beer for example but kai what what i think is is, is pretty interesting is um the fact that i i i briefly mentioned that um that central banks in the uh in emerging markets are now really they they have become a a very very significant uh, a buyer of gold so before that's that's on slide 45 um um, um if you want to show that to the audience yep. um before the outbreak of the ukraine war um central banks on average bought 118 tons of gold now since the outbreak of the war on average it's 279 tons so so this is this is really significant and i had a look at um quite recently um, I did um, study the, the World Gold Council um, survey um, since the year 2019, where basically they, they asked um, um, the asset managers sitting in, in, in the world's um, central banks, you know, um, um, what strategies they're following. And, and from 2019 to 2024, an average of 78% of all respondents um managed gold reserves separately however um, um i think it's 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 really interesting that they are increasingly seeing gold as a strategic asset so in 2019 only 50 15 percent of central banks um considered that gold is actually a strategic a long-term reserve asset and by 2024 71 percent of all those central bank asset managers are saying that it's actually a strategic asset so if you have a look for example at the gold allocation of most of the emerging market um central banks then you can tell there's they're still heavily underweight so so i would say you know in this world of um you know deglobalization where it's a world that is basically breaking into two different blocks or whatever i think that gold as a as a neutral monetary um asset as a as a currency that is traded 24 7 without any counterparty risk will will continue to play a major role and therefore i think that central banks especially from emerging markets will continue to be really one of the most decisive players in the market the u.s weaponized the swift system are the emerging markets weaponizing gold um, I don't think so yet. Um, uh, you know, we, we had a brilliant discussion with, um, um, Brent Johnson, you know, you know him, um, uh, Mr. Milkshake, um, who's getting lots of hate for, you know, being bullish the U S dollar. Yeah. I, I, it's a, it's a very emotional discussion and he just says it's, it's the least dirty shirt. Um, and he yeah. would just prefer, um, the U.S. dollar to the euro and uh, uh, the the renminbi and the yen, and I to some to some degree I I I, um, I think he's right. Um, and then on the other hand, we had uh, Louis Vincent Gaff, um, um, the head of uh, of Gave Call, um, sitting in, in in Hong Kong, and and he really knows the Chinese market very very well. So I asked him. Um, Louis, do you think that Xi Jinping, you know, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's getting up in the morning and then he, he um, uh, uh, opens his Bloomberg or whatever and he's, he, he looks at the price of gold? He said, no. I mean, gold is just a means to achieve something. Um, it is important for the Chinese, but it's not, you know, crucial for their whole strategy. Yeah. So I think we tend to... to to overestimate the role um, um, that gold is is playing in this whole um, de-dollarization uh, chess game um, at the moment, um, but but then on the other hand, um, you know, if you have a look, for example, 
at um, you know all those um, bilateral trade agreements that are that are uh, being negotiated and 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 made at the moment where um, uh, countries are not settling in in U.S. dollar terms anymore, but but rather in local currencies. Um, I think this this de-dollarization um, um, story has really become mainstream, um, but it takes a long time to um, you know to go from from one world reserve currency and one let's say uh, trade currency to another system. Um, so I think we're in the middle of this process. Um, but for everybody saying you know we will uh, soon wake up and the the renminbi will be um, gold backed. Um, I think that's not going to happen because actually, uh, uh, you know, I don't think that the Chinese really want to give up the control. They they don't want to um, um, uh, open up their their capital account, uh, uh, obviously. So so that's not going to happen. But but gold plays a role, but it's not like the the central role in this in this big game that we're we're currently seeing. In your research, Ronnie, and I wanted dive too deep into that rabbit hole or jump down too deep into that rabbit hole but uh, i've been hearing rumors and, and talk about the unit i'm not sure if you heard about it like yeah. a, a, a new gold-backed currency 40 percent gold-backed currency is there any truth to that like is there any evidence that that will actually happen i'm just curious well 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 we, we we've been researching it for 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 a bit i have to say only uh and there's actually there's there's very very few information out there um it is I think one one Russian guy and a, and a Chinese um, researcher, and then at the end it says, yeah, you have to d donate uh, bitcoins uh, to uh, to fund this research project. And I thought, okay, it, it 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 sounds a bit bit strange, but but on the other hand, if 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 you follow actually what's um, um, what especially the Russians, but also the Chinese, and 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 then I think we we all know that. Um, you know the, the 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 first trip of Vladimir Putin after after his election, he went to China uh, uh, right away, and and there was this kind of awkward hug between Xi Jinping and 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 Vladimir Putin. So I think this this obviously this relationship is 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 closer than ever. Uh, and if you follow what um, what really important officials um, are, are are saying regarding you know. Um, not playing by the rules that um, that they haven't written actually yeah yeah and and you know not committing to um, to, um, to to a game plan that they've been um, uh, they've been uh, uh, supporting for for such a long time it seems to me and and this is really uh, I think a pretty interesting finding from this year's report because uh, you know, um, writing 400 pages is, is always lots of work, but I, I, I love it. And, and, and um, so I, I went to the, um, to the OPEC library here in, 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 in Vienna and, and I just worked, uh, worked through um, um, the documents around um, uh, August 15th of 1971 when, when you know, uh, Richard Nixon temporarily decoupled uh, the US dollar from gold. And and the interesting thing is, and 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 we're showing it uh, in the in the report um, that that actually OPEC um, um, on October seventh, I think, nineteen seventy one, um, they said, well, due to the new rules in the monetary game, we have to kind of reconsider the um, you know the pricing of oil, mm -hmm. and that was obviously um, the reason for the for the for the first. Uh, oil shock and 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 uh, uh, the inflation wave that followed and I thought you know I, I started thinking about that when um, when the CEO of Gazprom uh, Alexei Miller uh, uh, at one point said I think that it was in in, in, in in 22 so so probably I think it was uh, early summer uh, 19 uh, 2022 when he said basically the, the the game of of nominal value of money is over um it, it is he said kind of our product our rules we don't play by the rules that we didn't create i think was the the exact wording <laughs> now if we have a look at you know where the resources are it's it, it's not only go, uh, gold it's obviously also you know it's copper it's energy especially oil but also natural gas it's agricultural commodities it's nickel it's rare earth 
Um, perhaps we could see something similar like in the 1970s where, you know, the BRICS, the BRICS Plus or the SEO countries or whoever says, okay, well, well, actually we, we have to, to reconsider in, in what currency we're selling you our resources. Um, can that happen? Um, yeah, I think so. I think we, 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 we get a, getting closer to such a scenario. It sounds a little bit far-fetched now, but if, if you want to read one book this, this summer, um, you have to read The Mandibles. Um, by, did, did you read that? No, I haven't. Uh, the Mandibles, it's, it's, it's a great, great book. It's, it, it, it's about actually, you know, the, 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 how a great American dynasty um, is actually going down through um, due to inflation, due to um, geopolitical things. And it was written many years ago. I think um, uh, Jim Ricketts, um, 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 he, he recommended it to me many, many years ago. And it's, it's, it's super interesting because it says in, in 2024, actually, um, um, there was, um, I think they called it the um the the stone age started so that was like uh, uh um um uh, the internet was down and and then actually you know civil unrest and everything and then, then in 2028 um there was a um a big speech in the white house by the um the the mexican or or, or a guy from mexico that that, that became u.s president actually um because arnold schwarzenegger hasn't hasn't made it um and <laughs> and and he says well uh due to the new um monetary regime now we have to cancel all our all our debt and uh, the international uh, money speculators are responsible for that and he actually so 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 in the book actually and Again, it was written uh, a couple of years ago. Um, they're coming up with the plan that um, uh, the BRICS um, are hoarding gold. Um, they're um, introducing a gold-backed currency. So it's it's really it's really staggering <laughs> um, seeing this to, to to play out. It's a it's a it's it's a fiction book, but it's I I, I love it. it. It's a great book for for the summer. Oh, fantastic. No, I appreciate that. We'll definitely link to that down below. I've, I screen shared it earlier so people can find it as well. Uh, I'll definitely take a closer look once, we're, once we hang up here, Ronnie. And uh, always looking for some, some entertaining reading as well. So, um, Ronnie, I've been jump I'm jumping around a little bit now. Before we get to the micro, meaning the mining stocks, I have one more question I couldn't fit in earlier. And I'm going to share the mm -hmm. screen again real quick. Um, and the question is... How much of a rate cut has been priced in into gold? Um, I think the market expects at least one uh, rate cut in September, 50 basis points perhaps. I don't know, the market is is a bit, uh, what do you call it? No, no let's, let's call it not focused because uh, it used to be 50, 50 basis points, but now it looks more like 25 basis points, 47.5% expect 50 basis point cut in, in about 38 days here. Um, what, what do you think? And how, how is gold going to behave? I mean, just have a look. At this chart, um, usually it's not like one, two, three rate cuts. Um, it's much more. Um, so what what I said earlier, nobody in the market can really um, um, has got this scenario in mind that we could get close to zero rates again. Um, and I, I cannot rule that out. It, it is definitely not my base case, but it can happen definitely, especially if we're seeing further turmoil in, in financial markets and a, and a big recession. Um, and of course, we've got elections coming up uh, uh, in fall. But but then I, I, I would say, first of all, um, Kai, if we circle back a little bit at the beginning of the year, um, the market has priced in, I think, seven or eight rate cuts. And then basically uh, throughout um, spring, we went to one or two rate cuts. And usually, I would have said that that gold should should actually actually be trading much lower in such an in, in environment. Um, the fact that gold is holding up so well against a surge in in rising real rates, because you know uh, nominal rates have been going up and and inflation numbers were coming down. We're seeing uh, um, uh, inflation expectations. Uh, I think uh, one point eight percent now for the next. Uh, 12 months, we're seeing break-evens have, have basically uh, uh, collapsed. Uh, Michigan uh, inflation expectations are down big time. So inflation is a, isn't a concern for markets anymore. And usually that would have been a really uh, a huge headwinds for gold. So, so 
this kind of confirms my view, and this has been the, the light motif of this year's In Gold We Trust report, that there is a new gold playbook um, that we're seeing that is primarily being driven by Asian investors, by emerging markets, and then also central banks. Now, having a look at this chart, um, we just showed that you know, in the last three previous cycles, uh, what happened after the first rate cut? Well, actually, gold did pretty well, I would say, uh, plus 31 percent, uh, 39 percent and then 25 percent. Uh, we did the same thing uh, with uh, with silver, for example. We did the same thing um, uh, with with mining stocks. So I think from from this side, there is um, that should be a pretty, pretty positive uh, set up um, um, going forward, and mm -hmm. and if you have a look, and this is really one of my 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 favorite charts because it's 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 really it's really simple, and and you know simplicity is the the ultimate sophistication. That's um, Kai on on slide fifteen and then slide sixteen. Um, I think it's 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 really um, you know from a from a from a cyclical point of view. Um, we all remember when, um, you know, the great financial crisis happened 2008, 2009. And I remember pretty well, I was back then, I was still um, uh, a gold analyst uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a Viennese bank. And I remember pretty well when gold did hit a uh, thousand bucks for the very first time. I think it was in, in March 2008. Uh, and then the great financial crisis happened, you know, Lehman Brothers and so on. Um, then the Federal Reserve aggressively lowered interest rates, introduced uh, the first round of QE. And gold was actually the first asset to, to make a bottom. Um, but it took us basically, I think, 18 months to, to rise above this psychological um, barrier, the psychological um, 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 level of 1000 uh, us dollars um and then the price of gold gold almost doubled you know until uh summer 2011. now if we jump to to slide 16 um you can see that that is it has taken actually as i've said before um we've been flirting with this 2000 us dollar um uh, level for for almost four years um and and we wrote in the 2023 report, which was called Showdown, we said, OK, um, at some point we will see this breakout to new all time highs. Also in US dollar terms, because we should not forget that gold has made previously already new all time highs in basically every other currency, but not in US dollar terms. Now we, we broke out of this level with a really impulsive move. Uh, we're still seeing um, huge amounts of pessimism, as, as I've said before. Um, so the Western financial investor um, hasn't joined the party yet. Um, I think they're still on the sidelines, somewhat hesitant, but could like a similar setup uh, like, like in the last big bull market happen again, where gold uh, actually doubled over the course of 18 months. Yeah, why not? I mean, um, of course, um, you know, um, how is it called? The, um, uh, the broader the, 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 the base, uh, the higher the space, something like <laughs> that. So could we go to 4,800 bucks, which is our long-term target that we um, um, explained in our In Gold We Trust report 2020 for the very first time? Um, yes, definitely, definitely. But I think what's, what's really important to say is that, that we're in a bull market um, and what should you do in a bull market? You should just buy the dips. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> as easy as that. Buy the dips. Buy BTFD is the more colloquial term, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> here, um, perfect segue. We, we need to talk micro, Ronnie. We need to talk mining stocks. Um, first, let, let's talk sentiment a little bit. Um, why are the mining stocks not behaving like gold does? Like... And, and don't tell me mining stocks suck because they don't perform because, uh, you know, like they never delivered. I don't think we can take that operational, operationally, we can take the operations out of it. It's more of a sentiment thing, in my opinion. Why, why, do not, why don't they follow the gold price higher? Uh, well, you know, that's, I, I would say we, you know, what, what we're seeing in, in, in our fund, uh, I mean, we, we, we just launched a, a new fund in, in February this year and, and very, very active gold fund yeah, where we said, okay, um, Gold mining stocks are probably the most top-down asset class uh, in the world. Um, um, they're probably 
there are great geologists out there um, um, and it's, 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 it's not really our, our expertise. Our expertise is to understand the cycle. Um, and therefore, this is a very, very active product um, that is basically being led by our incrementum active uh, aurum signal um, that is uh, showing us green light. So, so, so we are in the mining space. We're fully allocated, but there will be a time to be, um, you know, to 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 reduce risk. Um, and I think that the time is definitely not now. But what we're seeing um, um, in in the market at the moment is is a really big divergence between uh, the producers that are doing really well, and you know, all those numbers coming out recently. I think they were staggering. Um, and then on the other hand, um, you know, the junior mining space, the developers um, that just aren't really performing. Of course, there's some stories out there. There's some M&A activity. You know, there was a Cisco mining today that was in a copper space um, quite recently with Philo mining. But but besides that, it's, it's it, you know, there isn't um, too much uh, um, uh, momentum that we're seeing. Um, so, so it is, I would say, what we've seen a couple of, of weeks ago, I would have said, okay, this is like a, a, a really nice bull market action where, where miners are leading um, gold and, 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 and have really started outperforming, where silver is outperforming gold. So we have seen that the gold-silver ratio broke a trend line to the downside. But then actually over the last couple of, 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 of weeks, I would say that the market is 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 um, you know pricing in more of a, a recession trade, uh, and that kind of confirms you know that the the very low risk appetite that we're seeing in the space. Um, so from my point of view, uh, probably it's it's now really time to 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 um, to do the homework, yeah, to start uh, really aggressively building positions, but but. But I wouldn't expect too much action um, in the in the junior space over the next couple of, of, of weeks, especially if a if a recession should be um, 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 uh, materializing, because then then actually you know investors want liquidity. We're already seeing it in the in the bond space. We're seeing that the the duration trade is 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 on again. Um, but I think there will be a time when, uh, when finally, <laughs> um, the space will start performing. And you know, I, I don't know who, who had that. I think it was, I think it was Fred Fred Hickey actually, um, who was analyzing the the the, the number of, of of outstanding shares uh, in the GDX, and it's it, it's down, I think, eleven uh, percent from the beginning of March, when gold was actually trading three hundred bucks lower. So. Um, the GDX share count is, is currently at the lowest level since 2008 when, when gold was trading at 1200 bucks. So, so I, I'm seeing tremendous value. Um, I think also the, the, the producer space, you know, um, have a look at, at the Agnicos, at, 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 the, at the Alamos, and also the, the, the royalties companies. I think um, their, 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 their quarterly numbers were, were, were pretty convincing. I think probably from a cycle point of view, it, it's still a little bit too early to go, you know, fully all in into the into the risk space, into the into the junior mining yeah. space. Yeah, Barry came up with numbers this morning as well. Beat market expectations. It was up about three uh, percent before the market opened. So um, I'll have to dive a little deeper into those numbers. But uh, it looks like they beat on production and earnings, and uh, that that's what we want to see. That's what the journalists want to see, and uh, that's what might spark some interest in in this space. So really looking forward to that. Ronnie, I want to actually use... so, so, sorry. Uh, perhaps you Go should ahead. reconsider. Um, uh, uh, you should change your name to senior mining guy for the time being. <laughs> but I was <laughs> no, I was at the. Um, uh, uh, at a birthday party of a great friend of mine, uh, and there was a guy approaching me at like uh, at twelve or, or, or one, one one at night, and he said, "Aren't you this 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 gold guy writing those those big books on gold?" And I said, uh, y "Yes, probably. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's not too many guys doing um, um, that that amount of work in the gold space." And he said, um, "Well, uh, my my portfolio is is all in Alamos, Agnico, and all the the large cap stocks." And I said, "Do you run a mining fund?" And he said, "No, I'm running a value fund." And I thought oh. that was really interesting. Yeah. And he said, yeah. "The the the value investor community, um, and they're they're usually not like the loud guys, yeah, that are really vocal on on social media. Yeah, they're just reading balance sheets all the time." 
um, they have they have discovered the mining space, and I thought that, that was pretty pretty interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because that means sentiments changing and allocations are changing, and then maybe bigger dollars might be flowing into the space, which we desperately need in terms of trading volume and just price action. Yeah just to attract the journalists. No, fantastic. Ghani, you, you mentioned your big report. I want to close the conversation with a couple of questions about the report because you put it out exactly three months ago, pretty much. And uh, if you were to change a chapter or a section, which one would you change right now or would you have to change? Like, which one is already totally out of date? Um, what, what's something you would change? Uh, to be honest, Kai, um, I... I um, the, the, the report is really the, the mission of the report um, and what we really try to do is to uh, we don't want to comment on the on, on the short term noise uh, we want we want to understand and we want our readers to understand the big picture and therefore we said okay if there's just one piece about gold um, if you want to learn something about gold and there's just one piece that you can read every year, it should be the In Gold We Trust report. Therefore, I think, you know, if I have a look at the, the table of contents, I think it's still pretty relevant. I mean, um, um, I think one of the most interesting chapters was Mastering the New Gold Playbook, where we introduced a, a new 60-40 portfolio. Um, there was a really interesting chapter, I think, um, uh, on, on asteroid mining and deep sea mining that 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 is going to get really interesting uh, going, going forward. I think we've been, uh, as always, a bit too early on on, on, uh, on silver, um, but that's that's going to happen at some point. Uh, we're also writing about uh, Bitcoin and what's going on in the Bitcoin space. There's a great chapter um, about uh, the Japanic japanification of the west that is still pretty pretty accurate i would say and then probably one of my my favorite um chapters is is actually about the the image problem um that that gold has in the western world and i think that um this is something that's that's really important to 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 discuss because i think that Again, there's a that, there's a huge divergence between the perception of gold in the Western world and in emerging markets. But I think in the Western hemisphere, gold still has a pretty bad reputation. I don't know if you if you followed Mr. Böhmermann on on uh, uh, your beloved uh, uh, German um, ZDF, the Magazine Royale, where he basically said, if you like gold and own it, then you're a Nazi with uh, substance. Which I thought, okay, um, um, interesting view. And I think, as you know, people in the industry, it's it's it's, it's important um, uh, for for everybody in the industry to to stand against that that narrative that gold is is a, is a right wing kind of investment, and that also um, gold is being um, assumed as something completely useless and dirty and not green. I think it's it's those are really really powerful narratives. That I'm um, that I'm ex experiencing quite a lot in in the Western world, and I think you know our job is is to to inform and to educate and come up with with good reasoning and good numbers and statistics. No, fantastic, Ronnie! F phenomenal report. We were also part of it with Orin Inc. Thank you so much for including us there. Much appreciated. Thank I think you. page three hundred sixty-seven. We're more towards the back with our statistics on the junior mining, uh, junior mining companies, junior exploration companies. But it's much appreciated, of course, giving us that uh, you know visibility there. Um, where, where can we find the report? Remind us all again. Uh, in gold, we trust that report. Um, I know that not everybody is keen to read four hundred and twenty pages. Mm -hmm. Um, I got some feedback from from people, you know, reading the report in, in during their vacation said, actually, my wife hates you because I'm just reading about the gold lying on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's not that's not our problem. Um, but there's also a compact version and you can download all previous uh, reports. We've got a monthly chart book, the gold compass. And yeah, so all available totally for free on ingoldwetrust.report. And perhaps we can also make a link in the in the show notes. Oh, for sure. We'll definitely do that. And uh, Ronnie, we're so appreciative of your time. Thank you so much for joining us on Sora Financially. We'll definitely have to have you back uh, maybe towards the end of the year, see where we're at and uh, whether a Fed rate cut had any impact on, on the gold price and 
whether it was priced in already or whether we're Absolutely. on a hockey stick move here. So really Thanks, appreciate Scott. it. Ronnie, thank you so much. And to everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in here to Soar Financially. If you enjoyed this conversation, please leave a like, leave a comment, and definitely subscribe to the channel. Helps us out tremendously, Bring a phenomenal guests like Ronnie on, and uh, much appreciated. We want to hear your feedback in the comments down below. What do you think of the conversation? What do you think of the questions? Did it help you make better investment decisions? That's the whole point. We're supposed to be educational, informational, and I hope it helps. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back with lots more here on Soar Financial.